Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. No clue what time you're watching it. It is 4 11 p.m. Memorial Day, Memorial Day, May 27th. And yeah, Memorial Day was created for what it was, as I unfortunately had to walk away from the chat room the last couple of days. <clears throat> We're all going to the same place. And this was why I put on there on that how to retire happily, and not only happily, but quickly, was you only got a certain amount of time here. And you have no idea when that expiration date is coming. And as selfish as you may want to be thinking about it for yourself, it's not about you. It's about everybody in your world. Because you've got a responsibility to give them a better life than what you've got. Especially those of you who have children. So you can mess around and, you know, try and microwave your money as much as you want or you can sit back like i did on that video of you know give yourself a good two years 250 trading sessions every year it's 500 over the course of two years i'll put out a hundred 120 of these 32 trade alerts it's there but I'm going to finish off the end of this video with a link to Will Dempsey. And I've had a lot of loss, a lot. Children, mothers of them, this most recent one, my best friend, who I call her my best friend because we were not married. And your best friend is the one They love you. When you completely forget to love yourself. And all of you have one. So let's get smiley and let's move on. Because, yeah, I missed a couple of days there. I missed the NVIDIA earnings report. And for those who did not recognize the reaction on May 23, when NVIDIA reported your 33 point gap up on the SPX for an 85 point range, having been extremely condensed the entire month since we placed the lows there on May 2. You closed red, not just red, but you closed red. And then you come back there on Friday to end the week off down less than one point. Having three, four, what was it? One, two, three, yeah. Three, no, four, yeah, I was wrong. Four consecutive green weeks going into that fifth green week. And they fractionally took it away by a point. Now, this is an art. It is not a science. Seeing how it was only one point, I stick with my personal view of this, that that was still a green week for my considerations. As you saw, SPX shared it, which I appreciate. For those of you who do not know, SPX, she came over here a few years ago, and she spent a month less than a mile away from where I was living at the time. And she worked side by side with me to really get a full understanding of how this algorithm, this video game works. So in my absence over the last few days while I attended the funeral, her posts are as good as my voice. They, they are because she sees how this game works and I trust her vision. So in my absence, her sharing what was there completely appreciated and you know again i thank you very much 
Again, 84-point range for a big red close there on Thursday, happening to be that May 23 was also, as you know, your full moon. Your full moon taking place there right on May 23 could not have been a better video game placement with the very first close below 5,300, having broken below 5,300 on every single trading session. And we now have left ourselves with a little bit of a gap there from Thursday, 5,278, 5,267. Again, I am looking at this as being five green weeks in a row. Bring you over onto the spreads where, again, no VIX, no credit, no VIX, no credit. I introduced you to that Martingale system. As I shared, I'll start out here with the emails from last week. On Sunday, the NVIDIA with the full moon positions that I'm in, looking at what we've are, four green weeks, all indexes, not illegal, but abnormal. And coming down to NVIDIA. NVIDIA reporting on Wednesday, you got 1060, 760. Well, you got your 1060. But over here on to Monday, about talking about that minus 1% spread strategy and talking about the Martingale and explaining it. You don't need to go all the way to where minus 1% is. All that you're looking for is a bearish credit call play where you can get a combination of strikes that will provide for you a minimum of $4.50 credit. Like I shared there, example, example, one contract only. You're risking $50. That's Monday. $450 if it works. If it doesn't work, you go on to two contracts on Tuesday. You're risking $100 on Tuesday. If it works, you're getting a $900 payout. Doesn't work, you move on to three. Three, you're risking $150. If it works, you're getting $1,350. Doesn't work, you go to four. Thursday was your four. Thursday was your, okay, 200 and 150 and 100. So right there, you're talking about 450 you've got out there and your 50. $500 total risk. Again, working on this system here, one, two, three, four, and the payout there being 1800 bucks. As your payout on Friday, or I'm sorry, on Thursday, not only worked, but we closed below. That needs to be in red for my own personal visual. We closed below the safe edge, having broken that range, very obviously, because the range was so small. We touched the safe edge down there on Wednesday. Got a little bit of weakness, but we did break it there over on, you know, I'll change it anyway, on the full moon. Broke below it, closed below it, that 53.1272. We did not get a minus 1% day. So we now have 18 consecutive trading sessions without a minus 1% trade day. Monday makes 19, Tuesday makes 20, Wednesday, and so on and so on and so on, going into the end of the month, which happens to be on Friday. Now, again, it's a science, it is not an art, but when Fridays do take place at the end of the month, here was uh, do, 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 March 28th was one, 52.64. We placed our high, and then the full moon took place. We had, uh, where was it again? February 29 was not the end of the month on a Friday. January 31 was not the end of the month on a Friday. So going into this week on the SPX, considering that we do have five green weeks in a row, I would very aggressively be looking at a close on May 31 on Friday below 5,300. Without a doubt, that's what I would aggressively be looking for going into Friday. On the spreads, I'll share them with you on Monday morning. On SPY, again, same thing. 18 trading sessions have passed without a minus 1% trade day. Minus 1% is quite a big distance away now. Over onto the QQQ. 18. So we're going into Monday with 19 trading sessions without a minus 1% visit. 
no minus 1% within the course of the day. When we had the dip there on Thursday, both SPX, SPY, QQQ, 451.85, 451.15 did not get our minus 1% over there on Thursday, have not gotten minus 1% in the course of 18 trading sessions. Thus, minus 1% day is pending. And should we get a minus 1% day, having already gotten two of them over the course of the week over there on the IWM, things are going to begin to start showing that not only have we topped, but we are in the beginning of the process of the move to the downside, the end of this B wave, and heading into June, heading into July, the C wave, should it take out the lows over there from earlier in April, would be looking to be going much further down than what we have already discussed with 2012 matchup being around 4750. Nobody can even fathom that right now, but you don't live in Taiwan, so you don't really know what's going on over there in Taiwan. So here we are. This is a renewed because of how we have moved. I have it as an A and a B and C having topped over here at two times X, two times A. Everybody lined up over here. Everybody lined up perfectly for that move up there into that 5350 range. We only got 5342, close enough. But we have absolutely no warnings yet for anything bearish. Breaks below 5240 will start to give a little bit of a warning. Break below 5165 will start to give an even bigger warning and bring us back down underneath this trend line that came from the highs back in March. And then we still have the gap from the weekend. The, here was your jobs Friday gap and the gap that took place the weekend after that. So there is quite a lot of downside movement that could be taken. Whereas the upside movement, I saw a couple of comments that were taking place over there on Thursday when we had the big down day. And unfortunately, if you are exposing yourself for the upside, I do believe that you need to find a different place whichever different place to go trade different place to go look a different place to go put your money because that is a humongous mistake and unfortunately you deserved losing your money there on thursday that's just the way it is looking here on my daily thanksgiving which is the way i called it we've now had a 7.84 percent run up to the upside and again typing off which couldn't really match up that much better right up into that 5286 523 5350 area with 5286 considerably being our support level for the moment which we've continued to talk about <clears throat> you've got your gap here from friday unfilled you've got your gap here from the prior weekend unfilled and then you start getting into your warning levels your warning levels being there at 5240 your warning level being over here at 5165 with again your gap to be unfilled from the weekend prior to that and the jobs friday gap which again all of this is interest rate bullshit, which is completely inapplicable to the real world but again bringing you into where our full moons are couldn't have done it better. Your full moon bottom right at the bottom and your full moon top right over here at the top. Not only that, but you've got your 300 extension here coming off the 2016, 2018 pivots. 261.8. Apologize. It, it's an incredible fit. And then just up here, just above coming off the 2022s, you've got your 261.8 extension. Again, perfect little fit. But for those of you who sit there and go oh full moon what the fuck is this guy talking about well go plot the full moon literally go look at a calendar and go and put where your full moons are and how it applies to where you are in the stock market and see where your full moons show up and look at where your technicals are and bring in your elliott wave and bring in a couple of other you know sideline items and your full moon is one of your best indicators that you could find going as far back as you want to go. Doesn't matter how many years, how many months, how many decades you want to go back. You won't be able to find a better indicator to stress to you 
the timing of when you want to actually be looking to be aggressive than when you have a full moon. Full moon came in there literally on the fucking day before the COVID highs. So anyway, I leave you off with the SPX. As you can see, the big broad range, you can see this big throw over wedge that you're into and justify it for yourself. The QQQ, the QQQs are up here. And again, I am looking at this as a bearish baby wealth, an irregular B wave where we've taken out the previous highs and I see an A, a B and a C and QQQ is where it's all at. All of it is in the QQQ. So QQQ, play games, play around. You've got that big 449.37, the big 442, and 433.50 down here below where nothing actually happens until you break below 433.50. Looking at it from my detailed view, again, gap over here from Friday, gap from weeks back, gap from the weekend going back prior after the jobs report and then your big jobs report gap with right now 442.28, 442.26, apologize. That big problem area that we had long, long back ago as resistance is now your primary support level, 442.26. Do you get a break below that? And then again, here you go, coincidentally, 433.50 being right there where your gap top is from the jobs Friday report going back to the beginning of the month of May. Bring you over on to DIA and DIA, Dow Jones ETF has already started to make its commitment, already making its commitment to the downside, having taken out more than a week's worth of work and not yet really pressuring anything significantly until we get a breakdown here below 385. You've got your big jobs report gap that's down below that and a break below 380 would start significantly, significantly starting to look down into the 360s. And I'll leave you here since we're on here with the Dow Jones transports. The Dow transports, for those of you that do not know, are not in a good place. They are not. The Dow transports are what bring you all of your goods from one place to another. You go look at FedEx, go look at UPS, go look at anything that's doing any kind of shipping and you are not doing very good over on the Dow Transports, which kind of leads you over here into the IWM. The IWM, looking at this from the bottom over here in April to this little pop that you had over here in May and your commitment fade off that you have already begun, although you have not broken below 200 as of yet with the 2024 open being down here at 199.40. Bring you out into a broader, wider view. And it looks very similar over here on the IWM as it does to the Dow transports with the IWM lagging fractionally behind where the transports are. But then let's zoom out a little bit more and see just exactly what's going on here with the IWM. Because again, looking over here at the big October bottom when Israel invaded Gaza and where we are at currently as far as our move to the upside. And again, you start to look at this and say, wow, well, it actually doesn't look all that bad. Well, come over here into a water, brighter, broader, wider view. And you have done absolutely nothing with the IWM for the better part of going on three years, 2022, 2023, and we're almost halfway through 2024 with the decline having begun over here back in November of 2021. IWM, a lot of you have shifted over towards IWM and you've made a good decision with that because IWM is cheap, IWM is zero DTE, and IWM is also very, very volatile, very easy to get your plus and minus 1% days. So I'll leave you with that and bring you on here just quickly on to where we are currently at because again we are going into a week that doesn't really have too much scheduled on it although it is the end of the month this coming friday and we have 18 trading sessions under our belts five green weeks on the spx spy and qqq and we're heading into monday where Mondays used to be fantastic, but they haven't been. And with the cheap VIX that we have, the inability 
to be able to use that Martingale strategy to collect 900% on a call credit spread. The Russell 2000 futures, nice big drop, almost to the 100-day moving average, 100-day moving average on the dip there on Thursday, under the 50-day moving average. Everything has recovered, as you see, with the 10-day being above the 5-day. That is your first bearish indicator. Come over here onto the Dow futures with your not move to the 100 day moving average but you did get down into the 50 day moving average with that holding and supporting all friday down on the dip on thursday and all day friday dow futures doing absolutely nothing 20 day above the 10 day and the five day have already flipped bearish which you already know about over here onto the nq which again everything everything and i mean everything is inside the nq because everything is inside the nq NQ, five day, 10 day, and your old all time highs. There again with your 20 day, your 50 day, and your 100 day. With your 50, your 20, sorry, your 50, your 100, and your 200 day moving averages all moving up very aggressively, which means it will not take a significant move to the downside to be able to break all of those, which should it break those, would it then begin triggering either by the dips or either close my positions. And then finally over here onto your ES with your ES again, right up at the old all time highs, having literally gone nowhere for the better part of a week, absolutely nowhere for the better part of a week. And then your Nvidia beep boom, nothing to see here. Five day, 10 days, getting ready to flip 20 day, 50 day, very unfortunately distant and your 100 day very close very close to where your lows were back there in april so again there's really not much there to add on to this that we haven't already added on to other than the fact that now because of how things have progressed over the past of the course the couple of days the russell 2004 hour got aggressively oversold not extremely but aggressively oversold there on the drop there on thursday Come over onto your Dow, same thing. Very aggressively oversold onto your lows there on Thursday. Not doing so well right now as we're sitting here, still down in the low below 20s. And then you come over here onto your SPX, and you can see this incredible weakening cell divergence that's been running and absolutely no price action adjustment, which again, with your RSI on your four hour being here in the 50s, an aggressive move to the downside on the SPX just down there to that 5240 would already have your four hour oversold. So something that needs to be monitored. And then you come onto your NASDAQ, which as well, running cell divergence for the better part of a week and absolutely nothing price action wise confirming your cell divergence. You would need to break below last week's lows and then start pressuring the prior week's highs and you would be touching the 20 day moving average. So an aggressive move to the downside, it's still gonna be something that is going to need in one way, shape or form, something that will come from a news event, a news event that we just simply do not know about as of now. But I do have going on here from the alert room, which SPX shared, and this is real. I mean, I'm not sharing the audio, but you can look at it. This is airing on China News, showing how it will literally take them 48 hours and Taiwan is finished. They own it. They it, It's everything. This is looking at an aggressive air attack onto taking over Taiwan, but not even required. And living over here and living with my feet on the ground, ears to the pavement, there is a lot of chatter that something is due to take place in the month of June as far as China and Taiwan. So in any case, I leave you off with what you've got going on, which is, as you know, the SPX. We will have a credit spread out there after the futures open up and more likely on Monday 
rather than throwing it out here on a Sunday. You're looking for that 400%. You're looking for that $4.50 credit. You're looking to use and implement that Martingale system that I showed you there last week, and I'll put it again into the email this week. And again, everybody who did send their condolences, look, I, I really do appreciate it. I've only got a chance to meet a couple of you face-to-face. -face. I have built friendships with a number of you. But because this has happened to me so often, or not so often, but it has happened to me in the course of my adult life on more than one occasion, I have found ways to enrich myself in carrying forward and living their legacy and producing the dreams that they had because it's my responsibility to do that before I get there. Because the only thing that really took place was they beat me there. So we're all going to the same place. So anyway, guys, enjoy your Memorial Day weekend, being Memorial that we are remembering the people that fought for us in World War II. And I will see you in the chat room when we get there on Monday. I will have an email out for you tomorrow morning. Again, I apologize for having missed the latter part of last week. <laughs>